Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the May 9th edition of the Free Thought Forum, um, brought to you by the friendly folks at PA Nonbelievers. Welcome to the show. Um, up on the monitor there, it, it looks like I'm kind of off to one side. Would you like me to move uh, uh, over? Okay. We always have uh, just minor technical difficulties, but uh, remember that while we are incredibly talented, we're not totally immune to uh, slight uh, hiccups. So, anyway, Mother's Day will soon be here. I hope uh, all you uh, kind mothers out there uh, will appreciate the, uh, the gifts that you uh, will get. Uh, if you uh, haven't received uh, any, uh, if you haven't received uh, any greetings from loved ones, uh, say by noon, uh, you can casually call them up and, uh, well, sort of hint or r remind them. Uh, that that's, is absolutely uh, uh, absolutely fair. So anyway, not only will Mother's Day uh, be here, but also the ye old 42nd annual York Street Fair, which is on Sunday, May the 14th, Mother's Day. Yes, once again, Pan will be starting its tabling seasons with this downtown event. Now, un unless there's uh, some last-minute uh, uh, changes by the, the, the York Counts Council or whoever puts this uh, on, we will be located at the corner of Beaver and Market Street, where we will have set up uh, we have set up our shop for the last ten years. Bumper stickers uh, and pins will be on uh, sale and. Plus, we'll even uh, give you our free opinion if you like it. Um, let me just uh, read a little bit uh, here out of the uh, Community Courier uh, here. The 42nd annual Old York Street Fair will be held in downtown York in and around Continental Square on Sunday, May 14th from 1230 to 6 p.m. Now, actually, uh, people will be there um, probably about from 10 o'clock uh, <laughs> on. Uh, they're, they're setting up their, uh, setting up their booths. Uh, uh, yeah, approximately 100 arts and craft vendors will be made, will offer handmade uh, gift items for purchase. Uh, and there'll also be plenty of uh, food vendors uh, there guaranteed that you will uh, find something that you like to, uh, to eat, whether it's healthy or whether it's unhealthy. One of my personal favorites, uh, of course, is a uh, Italian hot sausage submarine. Like that. Oh, yum, yum, with peppers and onions uh, on the thing. Now, as you can see, I always have a, a slight uh, problem with, with weight, so I try to stay away from uh, those as much as possible. Now, also bring the kids with you. I mean, they've got a kids fun block, which will fe uh, feature a variety of inflatable games, face painting, and other t entertainment. Ticket sales for the inflatables will support the York City special events. Uh, the Bugman Bridges will also display his vast collection for children of all ages to touch. That's bugs. Um, also, there will be uh, an American Red Cross will be there if you uh, would like to donate uh, blood. And it will hold an, uh, a blood drive in conjunction with the fair from 11.30 a.m. to 4 p.m outside the Historical Society Museum on the 200 block of East Market Street. It takes approximately one hour to make a donation. 
Uh, that includes a little uh, treat of the orange juice that you have after. Uh, if you want to make an appointment, schedule it by calling uh, 800 Red Cross or visit um, www.redcross.org and select Donate Blood Walk-In. Uh, donate Blood. Walk-ins are uh, welcome, but uh, appointments will make the thing go a little bit faster. Um, those who attempt uh, to, to donate will receive two complimentary tickets to the Penmarsh Irish Festival. Inside the... Uh, Oh, yeah, there's uh, also, uh, for people that uh, have trouble finding a, uh, a parking spot, um, uh, there are several areas, uh, several areas uh, here that will be uh, set up if you can't find it on the street. Uh, Harrier Area Community College, uh, Central Penal. Pennsylvania's Community College, York campus, will uh, provide free parking and a shuttle bus will transport attendees to and from the street fair. And signs will be posted in lots 902 and 903 behind the Leader Building on campus. That's at 2010 Pennsylvania Avenue, York. The first bus will leave the campus at noon and will travel back and forth continuously throughout the event. The last bus will leave the fair at 6 p.m. So be there, catch the bus, or walk. Which, is, it's not too, too far, but I'm, I'm quite sure. Um, Doug, what, yes. was, what was that address again for the parking spot? Uh, I think you said 2010. Two, yeah, um, 2010 Pennsylvania Avenue, York. Okay. Okay? Yep. Okay, so uh, drop by our booth and share your thoughts with non-believers and semi-believers uh, alike and people who just don't know what the heck that they uh, they believe but uh, we like a, a conversation we like questions we like comments uh, and everything and uh, we like to keep it friendly at all times please bear in mind don't bore us to death by telling us that we're going to hell uh, this is an old mantra that we've heard thousands of times before and all I can say is, if that is the case, I will save you a seat by the fire. <laughs> Next thing, uh, it, if you decide to come uh, there, we, uh, uh, we do have uh, pamphlets that um, are free. We have uh, other items like pins and jewelry that of the uh, non-believer uh, uh, category and uh, also we have some uh, uh, gay pride uh, pins as well we, we don't uh, really um, we try not to discriminate against anyone because everyone has their their own personal rights so long as they don't hurt anyone else pursuing those rights. Now, by the way, to all you teachers out there, today is National Teachers Day. And uh, that's to honor all the uh, wonderful teachers uh, that, are, that are trying to keep our uh, kids out of the pool halls and uh, give them a semblance of education, whether they want it or not. So, let me ask you a question here. How do you feel about blasphemy? Using the Lord's name in vain. Is it okay when you're, you know, you're, you're really pissed off. 
should it be against the law and punishable right here in the good old U.S. of A.? Yes, I know, half of uh, the viewers out there are yelling, oh, hell yes, throw them in jail. Um, uh, the other half are yelling, well, no way. We have free speech here in America. But what about other countries? In some countries, when you are really frustrated at something and utter those familiar words that one time or another we've all sort of slipped and said, God damn it. You could find yourself in jail or severely beaten by a crowd of people or even put to death. I saw in the news uh, earlier this morning that a, um, a Pakistani uh, Christian accused of uh, blasphemy was let out of jail after three years. I mean, he hadn't been charged with anything, but they decided to let him out uh, of jail. A teenager was uh, arrested for sharing a blasphemous Facebook posting. All he did was, the boy was arrested in Pakistan after liking an allegedly blasphemous Facebook post. Police officials told the news, uh, uh, the AFP uh, news agency um, that it was against the, the law. Uh, in the same year, um, an Ahmadi woman and two children were killed in riots over being accused of blasphemy. So, you know, if if you think that uh, maybe you want to see uh, laws uh, governing our speech here in the, uh, the United States, you ought to think about where it can actually go, considering how other countries uh, are. Now, um, our, uh, our, our kin, our brothers, uh, Atheist Ireland, which is the, uh, the premier uh, atheist group uh, in uh, Ireland, uh, they have uh, posted instances where even over in Ireland, the uh, people have been arrested for blasphemy. Now, in some places here in the States, there are still blasphemy laws, but uh, fortunately, they, they aren't really um, enforced. Now, if I was to, uh, say, take a, uh, a Bible like this, okay, the Holy Bible, and just rip the cover off it, Some places would, uh, if we had laws like in other uh, place, uh, places, hey, I could be executed for that. I could spend time in jail. And, uh, then, that by the way, I ripped the thing, I dropped the, the Bible and the cover ripped off and I didn't just rip it off. <laughs> I've had the thing rebound a number of times, but just to uh, get the point uh, across. Uh, to you. Um, the people, uh, the person that was arrested um, in Jakarta, Indonesia, um, the latest uh, on the bas blasphemy trail uh, of the Indonesian capital's minority Christian government, a guy by the name of um, what is this? Uh, Basuki Aghok um, anyway, uh, he was sentenced to uh, two years in jail for saying blasphemous things about the Koran. Think about it here. <clears throat> Just like I wouldn't want to be arrested for uh, saying anything about the uh, 
the fairy tale the Bible, you just certainly don't want to say anything uh, bad or blasphemous, as they would consider it, uh, against the, uh, the Koran. Now, the Human Rights uh, Office said it is concerned by the two-year prison sentence given to Bashuki Basuka uh, for his alleged blasphemy against Islam. Now, on Twitter, which you should all be familiar with by now, uh, if you don't know about it, write uh, to President uh, Trump and ask him all about Twitter, and I'm sure he'll give you instructions on how to use it. Um, on Twitter, the, the Office of the High Commission for Human Rights said it's calling on the Indonesian government to review the blasphemy law, maybe let up a little bit. But blasphemy is a criminal offense in Indonesia and punishable by up to five years in jail. Well, if they had the same thing for the Bible, then I guess that I would be in jail right now and I would be, uh, I'd be coming live from San Quentin or uh, uh, wherever they would put me. Now, the Indonesians are sort of divided between shock and jubilations uh, after the Jakarta's governor was sentenced to two years in prison for the Koran. Now, outside the court uh, today, supporters uh, of the uh, gentleman jailed uh, wept while members of the Islamic group punched the air in celebration uh, on Twitter. Some Indonesians have declared the verdict makes them ashamed of their country. So what do you think? This is a, uh, a live call-in uh, show. Uh, we should be having the uh, phone number up on the screen very shortly. And you can call in with your uh, comments or questions about the story. If you have any uh, uh, comments, please give us a, uh, a call. We'll be pleased to answer your questions or listen to your comments, <laughs> so long as they're civil. Um, well, it looks like that uh, even though uh, the uh, election, our election, uh, is over, um, and there's a, a lot of uh, fallout, if you will, um, about the results. I mean, you know, you know supposedly lawsuits are being, um, are being filed, uh, courts are looking at it, you know, were the Russians really uh, influencing uh, our election? Well, you know, who the heck knows? Some people say that uh, Russia was doing it for Trump. Some people say that the uh, Russians were doing it um, for uh, you know the, the Democratic uh, uh, Party, but who knows? Because everyone else is pointing fingers at someone else. I suppose that uh, somewhere in the world, uh, someone probably tried to influence an election. I mean, of course, you want to see your own man, uh, your own woman. Uh, get in, so maybe they will have a um, you know, slightly shady, do slightly uh, uh, shady things. Uh, do the uh, candidates necessarily know about it? No, of course not. No more than uh, what was our last president uh, that was impeached? Uh, Nixon. I don't think that Nixon knew about the, uh, the break-in at uh, Watergate before uh, his friends and workers decided that they were going to uh, break into the, uh, the building and into, a, uh, sorry, into uh, the office of a psychiatrist. 
his big mistake, of course, was that uh, he was trying to be, uh, back his people up and deny uh, everything. He, of course, he would have been a whole lot better off uh, and probably finished serving out his presidency if he'd just said, Maya culpa, Maya culpa, uh, or mea culpa. Um, people who had the, uh, the good intentions uh, did this thinking they would help me, instead they, they hurt me. And uh, I guess the buck stops uh, here and uh, I ask for the uh, America's forgiveness. And he'd better probably uh, let it go, you know, or give him a slap on the, uh, the wrist. But in France, uh, the last election that we had in the past couple of uh, days here for, um, was, is it prime minister or president, um, Jim? I don't know. I don't know what their uh, election was for. I could look it up, but for the moment, <laughs> I don't know. But, well, anyway, they uh, had a, uh, two uh, candidates that were running. One looked like a, uh, a very young, I think they said he was about 35, uh, mm -hmm. uh, gentleman, uh, who was uh, sort of squeaky clean, and he promised to, uh, he, he promised to, uh, you know, re reform everything, and uh, he was pro this, pro that. And then there was this, this woman that bared a very close resemblance uh, in attitudes to uh, Donald Trump. And for a while, uh, a lot of people uh, were sort of worried that this radical person who was uh, in favor of uh, isolationism and w wanted to uh, you know, get rid of um, the foreigners in the country, not l allow any more people uh, in, that she was going to get elected. But over there in France, a lot of the people uh, tune in to American news and American uh, uh, CNN over in, uh, in Europe. And what they're seeing uh, is all the unrest that has been uh, demonstrated here in the uh, U.S. by uh, Trump being elected. And uh, I, while I think that probably she could have uh, pulled an upset, uh, after the upset that Trump uh, pulled, I think that people were beginning to wonder, well, look at all the unrest in America. Uh, now, gee, do we want the same thing? So uh, maybe what we uh, should do is we should take the uh, the safe, uh, the safe choice. And so they uh, elected this. Uh, I think they said he was 35 year old uh, uh, politician that has a lot of forward and free thinking uh, ideas, and. The rest, we'll just have to see what the heck happens. Just like we'll have to see what the heck happens uh, uh, here in the US. Now that you've elected Trump, you can't very well say, oh, I changed my mind. Um, take him out. And I, I mean that, take him out of office. Um, and besides, how, how the heck uh, could you do it? I mean, you could uh, get them to impeach him, but that wouldn't necessarily get him out of office if the, uh, the majority of the people wanted it. But right now, um, the government is still in a mess. Well, Democrats against Republicans and uh, uh, s switching sides back and forth, and it's... It, I find it dis uh, disgusting and uh, why should we uh, have to be going through all this? I mean, is the country so divided 
the, you know, we're having all these protests and uh, uh, <clears throat> parades and people with signs uh, and everything and um, arguments and even fights uh, out on the street. I don't think so. It, I think what we've got to learn to do is that now that he's uh, in office, uh, then you kind of got to uh, let uh, the man try and do his, his job. Like that. Whether I agree with what he, uh, he suggests or not, you know, that remains to be uh, seen. I didn't uh, really support either candidate, but uh, I kind of knew that with the, uh, with the mood of the country, that uh, Trump would probably uh, win, and after he won, uh, he would uh, probably have a tough time uh, making friends in the, the House and the Senate, which has turned out to be true. Now, Hillary, Hillary Clinton, when, uh, or was it, how long ago was it when, uh, Bill was president, um, Jim? Uh, eight, eight to nine years after him was uh, the eight years of, uh, oh, and also Bush. Bush and, and uh, Bush and... Uh, no, I, I, when, um, when she was first first lady, <laughs> you know, I don't remember. Well, <laughs> I'm know, old. But, <laughs> Well, it was, you know, 10 years ago uh, or so, um, when she tried to introduce her own um, health plan. You know, I was, I was enthusiastic uh, about her. I, I can't say that I really fancied anyone that I'd want to vote for uh, at that time, but I was more pro Hillary than uh, than anything else so um, it kind of surprised me after uh, all these years and her 23 years 23 years when he was elected yeah um, she has uh, sort of made a lot of a lot of enemies and I noticed that even now she's trying to uh, explain a way of or what happened uh, in the election and uh, why she didn't uh, uh, win. Well, my opinion is that she was just outguessed. People didn't know the mood of the, uh, the, the country. So we have what we have, that, and uh, no matter what the reason uh, was uh, for her not uh, uh, getting in, the only office that really she has held was uh, Secretary of State. Now, I saw her on a, a TV show where they were doing an interview. I don't know if it was like 60 Minutes or something uh, like that. And uh, the host asked her, you know, what was her favorite TV program, and she replied, Madam Secretary, starring Tia Leone. I wonder uh, she ever thought of herself as being just like that character. I mean, yes, she was um, uh, Secretary uh, a state. She was Madam Secretary. Next. As soon as but I get anyway, it up there. <laughs> it's an awfully good show. And uh, you can't help but like Tia Leone as Madam Secretary. And uh, the things that she does, I really wonder if uh, Hillary ever thought of herself as being like the character, Madam Secretary, uh, Tia Leone's uh, character. 
Um, if you haven't uh, had uh, the pleasure of watching uh, the show, then uh, by all means tune in and uh, see if you like it. And it's quite um, realistic and they, they are up with current events. Okay, so what you see in the news now, they will touch upon and uh, put their own spin uh, on it. So it's a show which um, I would say, hey, watch it. I watch it. So uh, anyway, well, one of my favorite shows, and I know that you're going to say to yourself, Oh, boy, yeah, figures that he would like that, is the uh, show Lucifer. And I believe it's back for a second season. <coughs> Excuse me. Third. <coughs> no, third third season. season. Yeah. I find that the show is, is quite, well, quite enjoyable. And what it does is it puts uh, a new slant on the devil. Now, I mean, we don't know too much uh, by reading the Bible about uh, the devil, Lucifer himself, Lucifer Morningstar. However, uh, this puts kind of a face uh, on him and a character. Uh, the, the, the basic story was that uh, uh, he was condemned to hell by his father, uh, God, who, uh, for trying to lead a rebellion. Like that. And he was given the job of punish punishing the wicked people that were sent to hell. But, <coughs> excuse me, he got to, <coughs> got to get a drink of water. <coughs> but he got tired of doing that, of uh, being the mean guy. So he decided to take a, uh, a vacation <coughs> and uh, come up here to Earth, where he still retained uh, <coughs> a lot of his uh, uh, powers and abilities that were far beyond those of mortal man, that uh, he couldn't uh, necessarily bend steel in his bare hands, but I suppose he could change mighty rivers uh, uh, easily and out, you know, jump over tall buildings in a single bound. And uh, maybe he was just, you know, he could stop a locomotive, maybe. <clears throat> but <coughs> it's worth watching, like I said. Uh, if you read the Bible and you say, well, gee whiz, tell me more about this, uh, it's worth watching. They've got a great uh, set of characters uh, in the thing. They've got some, well, if I do say so, say so myself, some beautiful women in there, some d d demons, and uh, they have uh, the devil's brother, which you should uh, see on your left side, Ed, and his mother, um, as his girlfriend, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping so fast yeah, through uh, him. Uh, it's sorry, now uh, to his brother and his girlfriend, uh, I yeah. believe. Uh, but uh, anyway, that um, uh, he's the woman who plays the part of his mother is uh, I believe it's Trish Helfer, and um, sh she was in Battlestar Galactica. And she was the uh, the gorgeous temptress uh, that was trying to, uh, and also a Cylon uh, that was trying to uh, lead the, the one of the semi heroes uh, into uh, um, unrighteous ways. But uh, I was uh, in love with her for uh, several seasons, and I thought that boy, she when she dressed in her red dress. It was like, oh, boy, it's hurting my eyes to look at her. She looks that good. Well, I hate to be that petty uh, here, but since Battlestar Galactica, she's aged a little bit. I know, it's not nice to say. 
but she's still a fine looking uh, woman. And uh, even though she's the wife of God, that, and uh, the devil's mother, like that she plays a good part uh, in it. Now, uh, the next uh, the, the next show, they're actually going to have a guest appearance by God Himself, or as Lucifer calls him, dear old Dad, and they're going to. Uh, shine a new light on on God so uh, of course it's it's just as uh, uh, silly to uh, think of it as uh, as being real as it does uh, uh, thinking of the Bible uh, I mean it's a storybook with people's opinions um, we don't as uh, non-believers we don't think <coughs> that the Bible is the, the very word uh, of God. We think that it was the, uh, a book written by uh, people who thought they knew what God was uh, and what God wanted, uh, considering that they knew absolutely nothing uh, of how the world uh, uh, was created. Of course, they had to have God do it, and then, of course, later uh, they found out that uh, their uh, world was bigger than uh, just the Earth, that uh, they had the universe. So, uh, you know, the, the views and the opinions uh, of God, though, uh, never really changed because by the time that uh, people were getting a better view of science, uh, religion was firmly entrenched uh, in society. The, uh, the, the, the Catholic Church for a while seemed like it, it ruled the world, the Roman Catholic uh, uh, church and there was no way they're going to uh, admit that something isn't quite accurate in the Bible. So everything uh, has to uh, be the uh, the word of God, the verbatim word of God. Even though sometimes he contradicts himself in many different places about the same thing. But uh, anyway. Um, it's a good show. Um, it's it's very entertaining, and uh, well, that's all I really have to say uh, on that. Oh, uh, other than the uh, the devil himself, uh, he has an English accent, which I don't know whether to take take that as a uh, you know. Compliment? What I mean is the devil English, uh, but um, anyway, he's a very uh, pleasant uh, guy, all things uh, considered. Okay, now a, a little bit uh, in the news here. For all you business travelers out there, and uh, especially you frequent flyers, like I was. Uh, the FAA is considering, uh, or he put forward, um, I guess, a bill uh, banning uh, all computers on flights to and within the United States. And they're not only looking at that, but they're also uh, looking at other electronic uh, devices. That's going to make a lot of people unhappy. Now, the, the FAA is proposing that bill due to the, uh, the fire and explosion risk with lithium-ion batteries. And uh, we've all seen things on the news of, you know, the, 
uh, these hoverboards uh, bursting into flames and cell phones uh, with the lithium-ion batteries uh, bursting into flame. Well, I'm quite sure that you would not want it uh, on your flight and have the person next to your uh, computer go up in flames, uh, even though the chance is very, very slight. And you certainly wouldn't want to have it in checked baggage uh, where you couldn't get at the thing to put out the fire if it, if it did catch fire. I mean, th th they don't even want it uh, to allow them in check baggage. And business travelers are going to get really irate. Now, since most, most use uh, their computers and their electronic uh, stuff to doing travel time to work on their work projects. But the main uh, concern about all this is, funnily enough, not uh, that, oh, could someone disguise a, a laptop as a bomb, uh, but it seems to be the, uh, the, the device's use of lithium batteries, which do tend to uh, uh, catch on fire. And uh, with the, uh, the advent of the, the, of the cell phone now, you're seeing more and more uh, news on TV uh, or video of people trying to put out their pocket because their cell phone has caught fire and uh, there's flames uh, shooting out. And uh, it, it, it kind of scares you. I mean, if, if that happened on an airplane, where the heck are you going to go? I mean, unless you've got a drink on your pocket, uh, you know, on your, your tray, uh, you could throw on the, uh, the thing, you, you're kind of up a creek and you're not going to run up to the, uh, the men's room because you know it was going to be occupied when you do. So there you go, a flaming customer, uh, a passenger running through the plane. Yeah. Now, as a, a former frequent flyer, businessman, and engineer, um, logging about a quarter of a million miles a year, uh, being up in the air, being without my laptop, it would have been unbearably boring. Because also, uh, don't forget to, on, if you've got a laptop computer, you can also uh, put in a DVD. You can watch your own movie. So it really made the uh, made the time go by very, very fast. And it was a great thing to have. But unless they come up with something that is uh, a lot more stable and uh, safe than lithium-ion batteries. It looks like we might just lose uh, the use of the devices that use us uh, on, on planes. Who knows, maybe on uh, trains. Who the heck knows? But <clears throat> anyway, um, the, if they could make a lithium ion battery uh, differently, then probably there wouldn't be a problem here. And you say, well, why? What's wrong with lithium ion batteries? Simple, one thing. Uh, when you had the first um, the battery that you put in a flashlight when they came out, um, you know, when they first invented uh, batteries. They were virtually weak. They were uh, uh, like uh, carbon, graphite, and uh, a little bit of acid inside, which generated uh, an, uh, one and a half volts. And you could short out uh, the, uh, the plus and the, ne uh, the negative of the thing, and not much would happen. You could put them uh, in to your pocket uh, with a pocket full of change 
and um, yeah, nothing much would happen. Maybe you'd feel the, uh, the change in your pocket get a little warm. Then they make them a little more powerful. Now they've got nine volt batteries. Don't forget the, uh, the D cell and the C cell and the double A cells and everything. You could actually put it across your tongue and see if the thing was charged. But then when they brought out nine volt batteries, the little small things that they have in the smoke detectors like that, they were a lot more powerful. And some people, they, they play games and they want to Doug, put a tongue across. Doug, me. those were called transistor radio batteries. However, most Gen Xs don't know what a transistor radio is. But yeah, very true. They, um, but like I said, if you, if you put a, a uh, a nine volt battery into your uh, pocket, uh, it might get a little bit warm because they were. Uh, it's hot. They didn't have much power in them. But then came the lithium ion uh, battery. And, you know, when you, you talk of. Uh, uh, the power of something as being in uh, watts or amps, okay? And uh, the, uh, the former uh, A cells, D cells, uh, nine volt uh, cells, uh, they would like a, um, almost no power to the thing at all. But when they went to lithium ion uh, batteries, they find now that they can store a whole lot more energy in these batteries than uh, they could in any of the other batteries. You never heard about any other uh, batteries catching fire. They maybe um, leak and ruin your transistor radio or your, uh, whatever it is that you've uh, got. But they were pretty safe. The, the lithium ion uh, uh, batteries are capable of absorbing such a uh, high amount of energy that makes them last uh, longer that it makes them a little bit unstable. But it doesn't make necessarily make them uh, unstable, just sitting there uh, on the table, uh, when they become unstable is when you charge them. Now, the all batteries that are uh, lithium ion are designed to be charged at a, a certain rate, a certain power, a certain voltage, and usually come with their own charging unit that will uh, limit the amount of charge that is put into it. But people nowadays, heck, I've, I've probably got a dozen different charges for different uh, things, which are fine for just uh, regular batteries, uh, but I really have to search and uh, find the right charger for the lithium ion batteries because if you put the wrong one uh, on, then it overcharges. And uh, if you overcharge it and you leave it uh, uh, overcharging for a while, it does make them unstable. And um, they haven't really explained why it is sometimes after you're know, overcharging the thing and not actually using it, they, uh, they burst into flame, but something is going on chemically uh, inside of them that causes them to, uh, to explode and to burst into flame. Boy, that's, that's 
fairly dangerous. Uh, I, I saw uh, a video of this guy. He was uh, riding down the street uh, on his, uh, his hoverboard. And uh, I guess he didn't know it. And there are flames shooting out the back of his cover, hoverboard. <clears throat> and he didn't even know it until, uh, I guess, uh, someone on the sidewalk says, uh, excuse me, but um, I believe you're on fire, and uh, captured it with the, uh, the, the, the cell phone video. And um, so anyway, uh, be careful with lithium-ion batteries and uh, charge them with the correct charger and don't leave them charging overnight when you go to bed. You're asking uh, for a problem there. So, uh, you know, charge them uh, during the day or as you're having breakfast or uh, whatever. Um, well, I guess that's uh, it. I also, I see in uh, uh, the um, PA legislature here, they are trying to pass a, uh, a bill about, uh, for, for DUI penalties, driving under the influence, drunk driving. And they want to make it, uh, the penalties, far more uh, strict. Uh, you know, some people, that they'll have, you know, half a dozen uh, DUIs and uh, they're still driving. Some person will uh, n knowingly get uh, in his car and uh, be out drinking all night and drunk and still want to drive himself home and kill someone. As far as I'm concerned, you just committed murder because you wantonly and knowingly got behind the wheel when you were impaired. So therefore I think that uh, they should definitely stiffen the, uh, the, the penalties for uh, DUI um, in the event that uh, someone is seriously hurt uh, or even killed, then the person uh, should face jail time. Now, I, I know that a, a lot of uh, people will say, oh, no, no, you, 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 you can't do that. You'll put the, uh, the bars uh, out of business. No, you won't. All you've got to do is teach people uh, to drink responsibly. Um, I can really remember uh, a wow. time when I was um, downtown York here, and I lived way out, out in uh, East York, and I went to this restaurant that had the world's greatest Bahama Mamas, which is a rum drink. And it's like a smoothie. And I thought, I'll, I'll just try one of those. And I drank the first one down. I thought, this is just like a smoothie. This, this tastes great. And I said, oh, give me another one. And I had another one. I didn't feel particularly uh, bad or, uh, or drunk, even though it does have two shots of rum uh, in it. And uh, after four of those, I was finished with my meal. And I figured, okay, I'll pay the bill and, and leave and drive home. Well, I dearly fell over the table. I didn't realize how drunk that I had got, I did, although I didn't feel uh, drunk, I was definitely unsteady. And I reached in my uh, uh, pocket for my car keys, and I, uh, okay, I'll just have to drive home slowly. And it dawned on me, how many other people have said that when they're out, uh, they got drunk, and, oh, if I drive slowly, I'll only drive, drive 30 mile an hour and I'll be all set and I won't hurt anyone. Uh, and then, bingo, an accident uh, happens and someone uh, gets 
gets killed. There's a graphic on the screen now, cost of a DUI. I've seen them higher than this, but it says over $10,000 for the first DUI. Yeah. That's not counting jail time. That's uh, insurance lawyer changes, fees. lawyer fees, uh, impound charges, breathalyzer system for your operating car, a lot of other things, but it's uh, expensive. That's without anybody dying. Yeah. So I, I think there should be some uh, definitely uh, some stiffer penalties uh, for uh, drunk driving. And also, I think the restaurants uh, definitely should, or, or the restaurants and the bars, uh, should be uh, a little more uh, obvious. Um, they should still know who they're uh, serving and what uh, uh, the con their condition uh, is, and not serve them anymore. Now, as for myself, on that uh, thing there, I went over to my car and I thought, well, you know, I can drive slow. I only live uh, um, uh, about three miles from here, so I'll be all right. And I thought to myself, you've got to be kidding, dog. <laughs> You're in no condition to drive. And I locked my car and staggered acro uh, across the street to a hotel. Uh, and I got myself a room uh, in the hotel and decided that I was going to sleep it off in a hotel room. Yeah, it cost me 50 bucks uh, for it, but uh, it was better than paying you know, $10,000, uh, better than killing someone, better than... Uh, getting into uh, any kind of uh, accident. So there you go. I had enough sense, even though I was drunk, to know that I really was a, uh, a danger to other people. And uh, I took the right steps. Get someone to, uh, to drive you. Call a buddy. Get, uh, Call an Uber, uh, call a taxi, call anything uh, that you want, but don't drive drunk. Uh, so our next show uh, will be on uh, May the 23rd in two weeks uh, here, and uh, we hope that uh, you will uh, tune in again. We don't know what the heck we're going to be talking about, but probably a uh, a whole bunch uh, of different things. Um, just really, really quick uh, here. You know that you uh, you hear uh, with our government of uh, your, how high we are taxed. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, the, uh, the highest income tax uh, around. Well, uh, I think our highest rate is about 35%. Australia is 49%. Uh, Canada is 50% plus surcharge taxes. We really don't have the highest tax rate. We have a nice uh, uh, medium tax rate. That's uh, China is 45% uh, uh, plus they have value added taxes and everything else. France has 45%. So with our uh, lousy 30 to 35%, we're in good shape. See you next week. <laughs>